Download and listen to this on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast provider. Just check the description below. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, you uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh, Stephen being my um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer sort of given to us when we first started on uh, XFM. Um, and uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. <laughs> well, they go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the jungles and things. And yeah. how about little sort of endangered species? Dianne Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Dianne Fossey of the, of the, 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 of the Manchester of scene. Of the, of the uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me, because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> and yeah. I, wa I want to see it through. Look at the way he's looking at us. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this um, podcast. Carl, what do you think about all this? Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? Like, you need to be able to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I know, yeah. you, you're you not a fan of the iPod in general, are you? Or any of the MP3 things, you're concerned? Uh, it's, I'm warming to it, but... This is what's amazing about Carl, even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's, he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him <laughs> and we're, taking, we're trying to ingratiate him in the, uh, in the gang, trying yeah. to pass him off with someone from the modern day. No, I no, but, but my thing with, with iPods is, now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need <laughs> and now we're just messing about they said that in 1900 someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented they what? said that in 1900 and how wrong were they no but what what came out what, at what point what was invented in that year where they went right that's it now the 20th century think what happened in the 20th century go on well planes yeah but is that a good thing planes and that do you need to do you need a plane really wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be instead of traveling about war Why? war well look wars wars happening in it because everyone's saying well now we can fly we'll go over there so there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the airplane not like not like there is today right but what i'm saying is the more the the world's got smaller on it everyone's saying that right yeah. uh you know the way i was saying to you the other day uh you know we, we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday. And then they go, oh, die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place? A lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yep. Yeah. yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, well, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking. It just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far yeah, to see it. You're absolutely right. So uh, there you go then. The telly was the 20th century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So where Some would you stuff. where would you stop then? You'd stop making stuff now? Stop inventing stuff right now? If we're going to invent something, right, forget like the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. You know, <laughs> what, do you mean? what do you mean? No, you know, like the, the way that, you know, we, we have kids and stuff. If it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it is if man and woman, 
right? They sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about 78, I think, by that point. <laughs> so specific. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. but seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm going to do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not going to do it. No. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your hips you've, come off. You've, you've done it all now. Yeah. And then you die, right? So, say if everyone had that, they lived to be 78, mm. but then, just as you die, you, you have a little baby inside you, and as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, how is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think... I mean, what? I've never heard such drivel. You say, you're saying that, but if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> that's, that's what annoys me. I know he did, Carl, he never would. No, He'd what? never say it, that's the point. I, if you I never say it, if you never I say it... I don't understand what you're talking about there. What, <laughs> how, how, how was it? How is there a little baby in a 78-year-old? No, what I'm saying is it's like an apple, where... <laughs> The apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it, and and the apple goes and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what that's a, what happens. But that is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right, and centre. It's 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 controlled so that as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, stop. Wh whose responsibility is well, this? If you don't want to do but it, we won't do it. But is I'm it just... supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way? We, we live that <laughs> way? Or is this a scientific what, experiment? What I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round so really? we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you, <laughs> and there's loads of people here, and, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy, and you can't move, and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them, and, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who the looks baby? after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives <laughs> to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, one, that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. But thank it you was for it. The worst yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. This is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. You know, someone just <laughs> yes. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of garbage. In fact, I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know, when people die normally, everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever, but then there's this new life brought in, it's almost like a Bad news, but, good but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 why does it grow? Why grow it in, uh, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> well, what I'm saying there, is... Ready to go, just add water. I, right. I mean, it, who looks that, after son of Gladys? Look, look. There is no theory here. There's no, th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is, though, the body's always changing, isn't it? From caveman to now or whatever. In some changing. cases. <laughs> and they're always finding out more and more. Like I read the other day yeah. about how um, they're saying, do you know how like they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one. I say, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in, a, in a pub, right, mm. and I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. Unlikely, but go on. And uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right? And she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me, and I look up and I look round, she's looking at me. Right. And they're saying that's a new sense that, that they found out from, like, you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're um, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since, but, since like, man and dinosaur was knocking about. They're, 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 they've stopped. No, they've explained I, I think it. it's safe to assume that 
you know, that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explain I mean, that you just know that there's probably going to be someone there if they, you get They said it's from the time when, like, Caveman was, like, wandering about, and he'd go, hang on a minute. And he'd look round, there's a dinosaur there or whatever, and he'd, right, he'd leg it. This is, this is nonsense. One, it's one, not... I hate when people use the term when caveman was wandering <laughs> round. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, what, you don't believe us? What, you don't believe because you, because you've seen... Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. Yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a Million Years B.C. Year, a Million Years B.C. or something. A Million yeah, Years yeah. B.C. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but... She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact. But why, why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have... Dogs now, in a way. He's watching the Flintstones. He's, watching the Flintstones. he's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. When he puts out like, the saber tooth tiger, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and he, and he mixes in. his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, ju I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why did you say that? Why do you think there must have been? There a must have been point? because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. I, exactly. Why? Why? Why didn't Hitler meet Nero? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. <laughs> they must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. They must have bumped into... S I can't believe it. Yeah, I forget it. <laughs> oh. I met uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, um, who's he? Which one's he? He's, uh, is he? Is he a medium? He can contact the dead, is that right? He just chats to him and that, sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So he mm. said, what do you want to know? I said, just, just something weird. So he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country. And uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have where they used to... They used to, like, leave their own cup knocking like about, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody tankard. Like, Let's use a tankard if we right, establish that. Tankard, word. yeah. Because you're the only mug in this story. Right. Nice. Believing it all. High five. <laughs> Great. So this tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going. Oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about, right? Mm -hmm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain <laughs> having a, a tiny small tankard in a pub. That must be a real grind. So, so every time they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> they must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that. And they were like, oh, what's the connection here? Right? <laughs> What's the connection here? Oh, God. So they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. This, this, this tankard, every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, leave it with me. He gets his, um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, right, not a problem, don't worry about it. He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? What? Dies in a crash on the way home. Because he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, and I'm meant to go. That's amazing. Derek Cora, he told me. <laughs> it's Carl, I have I have I have I have no opinion of that story other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure it's of. It's not just him, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of... Like, I, I, I've got a mate, right, who uh, is, is living in this big stately home. Right, and, and he's living in there now. He pays hundred pound a month. There's about eighty rooms, Gee. and uh, it's this big stately house, and what have you. And I went, I went down there. He said, "Oh, come down, and have a look." Right, and from outside, you go, oh, "This is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Manor Born or something." You go, "This is this is impressive," but then when you get in, it's like it's a wreck, and and we go in, and all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall, and it was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, Ooh. right? And I said, what's this here? So I wandered over, right? Got right up close to it, and somebody had wrote it, 
<laughs> somebody had wrote it. Oh. Some, somebody had wrote it. I, I love someone. this. You can do it. Right, go on. Yeah, go on. So, sorry. So sorry there's, there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it and it says, flies, right? With an arrow. Flies, like, flies this way. Yeah. Right? I think that's, that's a bit weird. <laughs> so I follow the arrow, right? Which goes to this corner where there's a shelf. About 3,000 dead flies on it. Oh my god. Condom stuck on the top. <laughs> I might remember in the first podcast I was telling you about uh, this scary house that my mate lives in where he's like uh, a security man. You're not, you're not like a security man, are you? What are you? Well, I just look after it. You just look after it and that. He just looks after it. So this is it because I thought I'd show you around it because just in case you thought I'd made it up and that about the, uh, the bit about the flies and all that. Where there's flies on a shelf and stuff. So this is the sort of state I was telling you how it's a mess. This is it. Ceilings caving in over there. That's just there. Pair of pants. Right then, we've uh, found the room that I was talking about on the podcast uh, with the dead flies and that on it. Uh, this is the sign that, uh, that I was telling you about. Got a fly on it, right? A little arrow. There's flies here, look. A little ladybird there. Oh, flies attacking the ladybird and that. Right? So you've got that. So follow it along, and right, you think, oh, there's nothing there. And you've got, you can get the camera up there, right? Look at that lot. Oh, dead, dead flies. I'm just showing you this because some people have said, oh, you made it up and all that. But there's no way, just for the sake of the podcast, I'd go around collecting that many dead flies. Uh, there's a condom as well that I was talking about. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's weird, isn't that it? That is weird. That is that weird, is weird. Right? So I'm looking at that, and there's, there's loads of stuff on the floor and that bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? And it had, uh, like, in biro and that. It looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had uh, uh, something like, need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets. Like that, all this, like all stuff for like, and I turned it over, right, and it said, none of this now needed, baby dead. <laughs> right. Now that's weird, isn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about when you get a bad vibe, you go, that's, that's, who's been in here? It's bad vibe, it's just based on the fact that your mate's in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along. Because you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh my God, I'm Carl Pilkington. And hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. That is weird. Flies in a Johnny equals badness. <laughs> the, the flies in a condom was weird It's now. weird. I don't know but, it's... But, but the note... The note... Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that. Reading it by torchlight. You must have been terrified. It's a bit... It's a bit odd, isn't it? Rick, you'll be pleased to know we've already had some responses and uh, Simon and Mark have already emailed us in this link to something that was on the BBC News website. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's a remarkable story. Lion mutilates 42 midgets in Cambodian ring fight. That's, that's a, just the headline. That's a hell of a headline. That I mean, makes me want to know more about yeah, the story. Well, that's, what headline, that's what a headline should do. Spectators cheered as entire Cambodian midget fighting league squared <laughs> off against African Lion. So tickets had been sold out three weeks before the much-anticipated fight. The fight was organised when an angry fan contested Yang Shimoni, president of the CMFL, claiming that one line could defeat his entire league of 42 fighters. Well, the fight was ended, Rick, after only 12 minutes, after which 28 of the midget fighters were declared dead 
Right. While the other 14 suffered severe injuries, including broken bones, lost limbs, and they were basically but unable the, to fight. But the anymore. lion wasn't hurt. It would have seemed that the lion was okay. Oh, good. Well, that's amazing. Carl, what are your thoughts instantly? I mean, you're going to have a, a take on that. See, what's annoying me is I've sent money to Cambodia because apparently they're hungry and haven't got any energy. So what's going on? <laughs> well, it's it's much easier to, to to fill up a midget than it is a regular Cambodian. You know, they, they, they're, they're I just feel like I'm, I'm being cheated a bit. You were conned before with a charity, weren't you? Well, a few times, yeah. With it, what about the the old lady? What was that? I got stopped, and it's like, uh, they, they sort of drag you in by saying, have you got a gran? And I said, no, they died and that. It's like, oh, did they die of the cold? No, she's, you know, ill, what have you, just, just old age. He said, well, what happens with a lot of people's grands is they die in the cold, right? So I was like, oh, that's bad, isn't it? Anyway, so she's chatting, and she's showing me pictures of these old women who look cold, right? Saying, look at her, that's Edna. You know, she's got no family, she, she can't pay the bills and all that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah. Anyway, it goes on for about 15 minutes and you, you feel bad. You give them your bank details, right? And what happens is, every couple of months you get a letter from Edna. At least right. It's not from her, it's typed up and what have you. But, but there's a picture of Edna, right? And it's saying, oh, this December, you know, Edna's going to be extra cold. It's cold outside, she can't afford to pay the heat and what have you. Yeah. Keep going, right? So you keep paying every month like five pounds or whatever. Get another letter, a few months later, right? Edna's sat there, she's got a tan. <laughs> what do you mean she's got a tan? Well, when they said, you know, she's cold, I thought they meant for the heating, not to send her on holiday for a month. She sat there with a tan, I'm not joking. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just a sort of a slight problem in the printing? No, no, definitely. Sure she, it wasn't she looked no, well happy. Sure it wasn't liver failure? You see, when, when does it become, like, bad to avoid people like that? Do you know what I mean? Because some people say you shouldn't, you know, they're, they're people, they're people like us, they've just had a bit of bad luck. Well, of course idea. they are. Yeah, I know, but I remember one on, on our estate, right, and she was a bit, what's what's the word that you can use, because I don't want to offend anyone. But who, I'd, I'd say, me, men, yeah, but sort of mental homeless. Is that a term? <laughs> that's the official term. That's, I think that is the, that's that is the, the new that's, official yeah. term. It's, it's mental homeless-itis. Right, so <laughs> she, uh, she lived on the estate and what have you, and... She aged. Three. How was she homeless if she lived on the estate? Well, she sort of decided to stay around there because I think oh, people right. on the estate spoke to her more than people who had money. So this mental homeless woman on mm. the estate, um, and what she used to do, right? She she acted quite normal, and she used to always push push like a pram around with her, right? And everyone was like, she can't have a kid, can she? Right? And she was dead happy every day. She was up and down, walking up and down the road. Anyway, one day she got to walk past, right? Turn round and looked in the pram. It was a bucket with a face on it. <laughs> Rick, we've had an email here from a bloke. I think you're going to respect him, because I think you can tell straight away from his name mm. that he's the kind of guy you'd want to hang out with. Go on. I know how much you love fun people. Yeah. Well, Paul, and he's calling himself this, Paul the Party Animal Parker, he's emailed in. He's given himself that, that, that Let, moniker. Uh, Right, I, I assume they're in sort of like quote marks, they're are they? They're in speech marks, yeah. Paul Brilliant. Party Animal Parker. And he's calling himself that. Yeah. That I, I can't wait. So I what do you, when you picture him, what are you thinking? Millhouse. <laughs> right, okay. I, I, I think he looks like Millhouse from The Simpsons. Yeah. I, 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 he's I, working I, in sort of an IT department, maybe? Yeah, for possibly. An organization? Oh, I think he might still be at school. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think. And, and this is the vital question. Do you believe him to be a party animal? I believe him to be a party animal is as much as a man with a long scarf that is mum knitted him <laughs> to look like a Doctor Who can be a party animal, yeah. yes. Do you think that when people are organising parties at his school, they're thinking the first person they've got to get on the list and make sure he's guaranteed uh, as You've a You've got guest, to take Paul the party animal. Because I, I, I bet he's got millions of affectations. I bet he's the, he wants to be known as the one that carries around a biscuit tin. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah, he's, yeah, got, yeah, he's yeah. got the scarf. He's, he's the guy got, who only ever wears bowling shoes. <laughs> it's his thing. It's his thing. He's a little bit kooky, it's his thing. And uh, it is fairly interesting what he sent in. He's found this on the web. A Serbian man who um, has invented a sex machine for women. Mm. And he's appealing to Western women to test his device. Mm. It runs on a 390 volt electric engine, simulates sex, and has a seven and a half inch artificial penis. As soon as I read this, I was thinking, it's just imagining there going, oh, thanks for coming in, yeah, okay. So there's, uh, what's going to happen is there's a penis that's going to pop out from here and it's going to, it's going to have sex with me. I'm going to stand behind the machine. <laughs>
<laughs> I've got to stand behind here. There's a lot of dials and stuff. I don't well, want to bore you in. Well, why do you have to stand behind it? Just I can't. It's technical stuff. But I got to be behind the machine. But there's no there's no penis on the robot at the moment. It's just no, a hole. That don't worry. What happen is I'll switch the machine on. I'll go behind, and then a penis will appear. Will it be like a metal looking penis? It will be a robotic penis, but it will seem like it's a regular fleshy human penis. So you've made this sort of like robotic penis look really realistic. It's really realistic. You will not be able to tell the difference between, say, the robot one and mine, for instance. You okay, well, you I don't want to see yours. No, 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 no there's absolutely not. Because I'm not, I've not come around here to have sex with a person. <laughs> I know, you've come around to test the machine. Yeah, I'm that is exactly it. what you're going to get. Okay, a well, piece you... of m mechanical action. <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of people, sex is important, isn't it? You know what I mean? Not to you. Well, it serves a purpose. <laughs> but, but what, <laughs> what purpose? No, Because no. you don't want to have kids, so what a purpose? Just, just, you know. Something to do in the evening. Something to do, isn't it? When the telly's broke. But, but for years, like, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? Machines from, like, Roman times, that, no. to that setup. No machines in Roman times. Like that, though. The old, sort of, uh, knob on a stick machine thing. <laughs> The old that? Roman I knob on a stick. I'm uh, sorry, but I watch Time that. Team every week, and uh, Tony Robinson has never done uh, that. Uh, an old <laughs> knob, on a, knob on a stick machine. I just think of Julius Caesar sitting down and go, okay, aqueduct, we love that. Yeah. Thanks for that. Straight roads, good idea. We can see the enemy coming. Yeah. What have we got there? Well, I'm glad you've asked. Blompticus. <laughs> what have we got there? W w Wanklicus. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I've got here <laughs> is a yieldy knob. Um, and I've, I've put that on the end of a stick. <laughs> oh, a stick as phallus. Okay, well done, Michael. <laughs> yeah. no, no. yeah. Well done. Yeah. You um, are my new right-hand man, as they say. No, no, no problem. Excellent. But they do, they do do stuff like that. You've been in uh, the London Museum and that, and they've got sort of sex stuff from years ago. They've got, like, these metal pants that they used to wear. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Metal pants? <laughs> yeah, sort of is metal. Is that a chastity belt, you mean? They used to make women wear them so that they could... Yeah, yeah, no, they, had, they, had, they had them for blokes as well, though. Metal pants for blokes. Yeah, Why? I just, no, I just think they sort of like sexy metal pants. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what with are you sexy metal about? pants. Well, we'll have to look because I haven't got it in front of me. It's just something I remember seeing some sort of sexy metal pants that I used to wear. <laughs> but what are you saying, sexy metal pants? Because well, that was not to British be... Museum. That was Soho. No, what, what I mean. <laughs> that was Old Compton Street. You were looking at the shop window. They always had window. to be ready for like battle and that, but these were a little bit sexy but protective at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so Lancelot, are you ready? To face the Black Knight? Yeah, just, <laughs> what do you think of these? Huh? I Will just there... want to look good on the battlefield. Will and... there be women watching, cheering us on? Well, you're not going to fight like that, are you? What about with your, your chest? I'm going to wear your... nothing except these sexy metal pants. But you, what about your chest is exposed? No, I can... you... well, it's a good chest, I'll be working out. Yeah, I know, but what I mean is you want to, you want, you want I've metal been, all I've over. actually been lifting up the round table <laughs> every week. I just work out, do that about four times a day. But that <laughs> machine, right, why, did it have to be a woman or could they have got a little gay fella in? I, I don't know. Let me just check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, doesn't actually specify the small print here. Yeah. I love that. Why do you want to see a little gay fella be... I don't, no, I don't want to see it. I'm just saying they're sort of more... Why do, right, right, Carl, why do you want... I don't want to see Why it. do you want to watch want to a gay it. man get buggered by a robot? I wasn't the one typing in gay machines on the internet, finding <laughs> stuff out about It's them. not Steve a gay was. machine! You just made it into a game machine. Yeah. He, he, wanted, to, he wanted to pleasure women with this machine. Oh, You're saying, can I no. see a little gay fellow get a robotic cock up his ass? <laughs> You're the one requesting that, Carl no, Pilkington. I don't want that. I'm just saying that. You're the one that wants to see gay men with metal stuff up their arnus. No, oh, what I'm saying is they're more up for a bit more experimentation than... What are you saying? Why is that the case? Why? Why do you say that? No, just, just, they, they just, you know... Butt plugs and that. I mean, what I'm saying is... What, what, you can't just say butt plugs and that. It, I'm just it, saying that they... I reckon they'd be up for it. That's what do you know I'm about saying. butt plugs? I, well, I don't know anything about them. I, I just remember seeing an advert for some once in a sex shop. <laughs> what, are you doing? what are you doing? No, I wasn't. I was just walking past. I was walking past the sex shop and that. Mm. And... Your you know, eyes glitz sort of why, you why, why, why were you walking past a sex shop? Just because I was on the way to work and that and I passed one and there okay. was a little sort of... One, it was open early, which I never understood. Right, it was about eight o'clock in the morning. Right, and I who's thought, rushing, who's, who's rushing out? Yeah, morning, who needs yeah. them now? Right, yeah. but I, sort I of must get a, a bagel and some poppers on the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I walked past it and it had like a little post-it note or postcard type thing, and it was like popping now, buy an item, chucking some free butt plugs. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what they for. I didn't. I've, I'd never heard of them before. But all I'm saying is, I've since found out what they do do with them. What and do they if do they do them? do that with them, then yeah. give them a go on that. <laughs> Another email here. It's an interesting fact. I'm hoping it's true. 
America's first nudist organization apparently was founded in 1929 by three men. Now, what intrigued me when I read that is the fact that it's clearly three blokes just trying to meet some nude women. They're all 52 balding. <laughs> exactly. With little, uh, uh, sort of those gold rim glasses. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just wandering around, and it's all quite saggy down there, and they're just knocking on doors saying, we've just set up an organisation. It's perfectly above board, completely yeah. legitimate. It's a, it's a nudist organisation. Um, have you got any women in there that want to come and join us? Have got really? any female members at the moment? Got any women in there interested in, you know, volleyball oh, or I trampoline? I can't, I can't be doing with it, me. You hate nudists, don't you? Nudists. I, d I don't understand what, what it's all about at the end of the day. And here's something, right? Do you know, like, when you're a bloke nudist, mm. right? Do you ever get any who just have, like, a small knob? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the question. What's that? What's your point? Well, you know, are there any blokes who are knocking about who just have a, a normal sized knob or maybe a bit smaller than a normal? Um, <laughs> uh, who, who are happy wandering about showing <laughs> off what, what they haven't got, if you know what I mean? I don't think nudists are just doing it because they're so proud of their knob. <laughs> no, but there's got to be a little bit of that in it, isn't there? Just saying, most blokes who, you know, nudists, mm. they must be pretty confident in themselves to, you know... I, I looked once. What? Where are you going? What natural. is this? It's natural, that's what I'm saying. What do you mean? This is Carl, Carl takes a sneaky look at no, menscocks.com? No. No. What I'm saying is, <laughs> it's natural. Where was this happening? You're in a, so you're in a gym? No. A lot of guys are getting changed and no. you're just checking you're, out their you're, you're at your bedroom window with a pair of binoculars <laughs> no. and there was a little fella across the road getting I was, changed. I was at some night out once. Go right? on. So you um, were at heaven and you were in, in the toilet? It was some night out and uh, some, some people come running on the stage, right? Some music started coming on and these four people ran out. It was two women. So two you're at blokes. a gay strip club? It wasn't gay in that. It was just a normal night out. Well, you know, some sort of party night out. Right. These These... People come running on, right? You got two women, you got two blokes. Right. They whip the knickers off, the fellas whip their undies off. At the same now, time? Yeah, all at the same time. Was it like, like, a, that, was like, it like a choreographed thing? So that, that happened, and all I'm saying is, right, before I had a look at the woman's bits, right, I just had a little cheeky glance at the fellas. Why? Why? Just checking it out, just seeing is everything normal down Why there. Why weren't your eyes drawn instantly to the ladies' bits? I d I, no, I don't believe me, I had a look at that. All I'm saying is... But you went to the guys first? Just, just, <laughs> I didn't know how long pants were going to be left off for. <laughs> so you didn't want to miss your opportunity, is what you're saying? You saw a window of opportunity to see some men's bits and you thought, I better take it. No, no. Because this may never happen again. No, So what happened? So you, you, there's, there's two women, two men, right? Um, I don't know what sort of event this is where you're looking at anyone get their knickers and pants off. I don't know why you're looking at all. Night, so huh? you go, you go right, there's knickers and pants off, right. Let's check out the, 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 the knob and testicles first. You're telling me you've never, like, when you've been in a gym or anything, you've not just sort of turned your head, had a look and gone, all oh, right, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So let's just get this question right. Have we ever been in a gym and just taken a sneaky glance at a man's genitals? Is that your question to us? Right. For me, it's the same as when you see someone who's a bit odd, two heads or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be honest. If I was in a gym and a bloke came in with two heads, I'd look. I, well, I'd try. I'd get a sneaky glance in the mirror. I'd go. Oh, sorry, but you'd look at his genitals or his two heads. His two heads. Or would you sneak? You look at the heads and then think, I wonder if he's got two cocks. And just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't try to look there. If, 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 I'll tell you what, and now I admit it, if they, I'm ever in a gym and a naked man with two heads walks in, mm. I probably will check out the genitals as well, just to make sure that he's got two of everything. Can I tell you the thing that always freaks me out? I do sometimes go to the gym and I live in North London, and the thing that always freaks me out is if there's a, a an elderly man, often quite short, mm. um, I'm always freaked out because there's at least two I'm aware of who've got very, very large penises. And I always find that really disturbing because, like, sometimes you can't, you know, you can't help but notice because it's like Godzilla coming through the <laughs> change room. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so that I do admit that's the only instance where my eye has been naturally drawn to it. Do you know what annoys me in gyms where people walk round happily naked all the time, whistling? Yeah. They get weighed naked, pop a towel on, and take off yeah. three ounces. How exact have those measurements got to be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Pop a towel on. I mean, yeah. unless you're going on the space shuttle, <laughs> I reckon you could give or take a couple of, uh, a couple of stone. Yeah, a couple exactly, of yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. Well, we've, we've put that to bed. Talking of, uh, eating knobs. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of, uh, one of our leaders. Sure. Well, you saw her in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth, oh. chewed them up, swallowed them. Oh. 
kangaroo uh, penis there, dried. She couldn't even get... It was so tough, she couldn't even get through it. And then she... <laughs> eventually, she what, eats it. What, was it like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she said, what do you think of that, Carl? What, eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just... I mean, I, I, I watch it. I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But what, what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right? They're eating that at, like, half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which is worse, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if I was there and Ant and Dec said, right, Carl, eat the knob, I'd go, hang on a minute, give us a few hours, <laughs> let me get some rice and that on my belly and just sort of fill me up a little bit more. I'll pop back at about half six this evening. Right. Have it ready. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be happier then. It's just it's just that thing of, you know, you, you, just, you, you, you don't want to eat you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could I'm, I'm, I'm saying like I, I could eat I could eat a knob at night, but just cut that there. We will loop that. If any if any uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote. I could eat a knob at night uh, by Carl Pilkington. No. Maybe do a, a, a dance remix. Yeah, just I, maybe you're sort of a house producer, and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going, and then we could oh, just but... send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure people pop really popular. Please, please, anyone, send us. You know uh, uh, that that looped with a nice little you know uh, funky house beat. Carl Pilkington saying, "I could eat a knob at night." It is hard eating a knob. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm, I'm saying like I, I, I could eat a knob at night. 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 Do you know the other week when uh, I came up with like a different idea of how we can sort of make the world run and that? Can we what? just have a quick recap of that? Because I seem to remember it was a load of old arse. It was, but... it was ridiculous. It was, um, he was saying that the, 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 the mm. world is overpopulated, so the system would be where people were living too long and stuff. So what happens is people live till 78. I don't know how you can enforce uh, that, right? Yeah. But when they die, they've got a little baby in their stomach, <laughs> right. like a pip in an apple, <laughs> yeah. that then carries on when they uh, die. Right. It, it wasn't a theory. It wasn't an idea. Uh, it was the ramblings of a you, mental you're case. You're saying it's stupid, but someone's emailed in and said, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Just say. If, if, if that's a no, right? I've been thinking. It is about, a no. What about if we do it the other way, right? Ah, oh, go on. Somehow, I don't know how. A yet. kid has an old lady. <laughs> 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 that's what it's going to be, isn't it? A child no. give birth to an old man. No. Hey. What I'm saying is, right? Go on. Work the other way round. Come on then. So if if somehow we can inject something. <laughs> In, in like, a, a body that's just died, right? Listen to this! Imagine this, but well, look, imagine this is notes. So when, they ha when he hands it into the Nobel people, yeah. and they go, if there's a way that we can inject something, they go, well, what? Well, I don't know the chemical formula, but something. Something HO2. Right. So anyway, so you inject it mm. in the temple. Um, <laughs> He's narrowed it down to the temple. So what happens? She sort of wakes up, Amazing. right? And she works the other way. So, like, she might be 77. Yep. And then she'll have a birthday, she's 76. And she's working that way. Right. If you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you with me? <laughs> no, keep it. Because, because the thing is, you've got... 
I, no I'm idea. really scared. Yeah. I'm really scared. This is the maddest thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. This is madder than the old lady with the pit uh, like an apple in her belly. It sort of did work. This is... No, it didn't work. It worked in your head. It's like a dream that you wake up and go, oh, I've got a great theory. And this it's is like, what... This is it. Let me just tell you the, the ending, because the endings works out a bit better. Go on. What I'm saying is, when you die... Mm. At the age of... 78. Nine months. What? At the age of nine months, because that's when you come out. What do you mean when you die at the age of nine months? You're not scared of dying because you're now a baby, so you don't know what's going on anyway. So there's no. Fear. So you've missed out a bit here. So this woman, what, literally gets younger and younger? I think yeah. when she's in her 20s, she's in her old age, Rick. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that's the, that's the fun part of your life, isn't it? When you're 20 and you've got all your energy and that. So before you die, you're actually having a good life rather than it being the other way around. But does she do different stuff to, to, than, than she did on the way up? Because she's already lived 78 years, <laughs> hasn't she? Don't forget. She was a baby once, and she grew to 10 years, then someone, then one stop, someone stuck a needle in her head and said, right, back you go. <laughs> no, we'll forget all that bit. Oh, I'll forget all that bit. How do we forget that bit? What I'm saying so is... So she died and she doesn't remember all her, all her... This is a new life, is it? Let she's, me just leave you with this. Right, you're talking shit. Explain yourself. But aren't the family getting younger as well? What's happened to the family? Forget I mean, I it then, we'll leave it as it is. No, we'll leave it as it is, shall we? <laughs> shall we? Can we all agree on that, guys? No. Shall we, shall we agree to leave it as it is? Is that alright? Because I don't want to hear any more from the diaries of Charles Manson. No, it's... it's I mean, you're a fucking maniac. A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website, or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family uh, a goat, and it will help uh, them for years. And it's, it's like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah. But, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are they are they happy with the present over there, like the people who are getting it? You you're an idiot. What you think? An African family uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon tied <laughs> round it, and they go, "Oh look, what Santa brought us!" Look, and that mince pie is gone, and that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, no, no but what I'm saying is, does does that? Fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when not that they want a goat, it's they need a goat. Do you think- What right, do you think it. this organisation <laughs> is? <laughs> not, just not, arbitrarily they're giving they're goats gonna, to people. They're gonna say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what are you- what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, <laughs> let me put myself in- in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Got any, but- but say- say- <laughs> say I'm- I'm- I'm one of them, right, over there. Right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day, right. I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right. <laughs> Now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go round for themselves, never mind a goat. <laughs> Don't they say, like, having a having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it. <laughs> well, I'm assuming it's all above board, the goat's had its injections, that's what some of the money goes towards. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? To, what, What's the main? What does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right now, wouldn't it be easy to to just send them a bottle of milk <laughs> without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it? That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat that was happy over here. Suddenly, it's on barren land. No grass. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> You didn't send a goat from here! I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <gasps> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? So, so, so yeah, let's do, this, let's do this properly. So there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> then, you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's gonna look after this, right? So tick, they're not happy. And then you've got the goat going, what am I doing here? <laughs> Definitely love this, surely. Have you started seeing this now? Virgin are starting plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. 200,000 quid, mm. and they, you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle into mm. space. Carl, thoughts? Go into space. Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back at the Earth? I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? 
<laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about up there, and you because you don't get out, do you? Uh, what you mean to do some duty free shopping? I'm just talking. You don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. Mm. Well, they no. probably let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you what, go you on holiday... you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's the bit you've got to do. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. <laughs> so you don't take luggage, right? <laughs> I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. But I don't understand what 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 is the point. I think it's the view. I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's it's all that thing about man conquering nature, and and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down all that way just for the view. Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway. Right, before I think about that, I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet. Right? <laughs> right yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. Yeah. What would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said car, garden. I know space. the answer. I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was all right. That, that's the sort of thing, that's what he's going to say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That would be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the he apes. He would love to go to the Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Well, yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, finding out what's been going on. <laughs> Going on. No, no. But, <laughs> but don't you think that, like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right? Yeah. Either of you. Yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like. Well, this is annoying because we've got you a trip <laughs> to space and together. a goat. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I am interested in sort of going on another planet. Right. Oh, <laughs> you are on another planet, mate. No, no. But do you know what I mean? It, it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you'd go on a rocket and stuff, but what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out, you're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it, that's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, I was because I was looking into it a bit, because I, I was reading about the, the Virgin Atlantic yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in, uh, in 1971, right, three of them went up there, there was one bloke in the rocket, right? The other two wandered off, had a, had a walk about, seeing what rocks they can find. Like and that bloke who was in the rocket, right, he was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> I don't know what I to do. What that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't I, <laughs> I do, not, do you know what I think he's trying to say? He's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, okay. No, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest to evokes an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to uh, Morrissey records. But what I was thinking is, do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came into your mind. No, just because I always, there. you know, at the end of the day, even if, like, my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just mean, you know, you never know yeah. someone's going to turn up. No, I don't go. like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm not alone. always. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've knocked on your door when you've when you've been stood there with. No, no he's yeah, taking his trousers off. No, I did it especially oh, knowing right, knowing right. that you were there. I've done it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Do you think he? Do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out, or, or did it go about, well? Yeah. You know, no one's watching here. Do you, do you know reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Well, um, if you uh, uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt, and also, lonely. did you did you float around um, with your cock and balls out? Carl, if you could have a superpower, like Superman, 
What would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision, flight, invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying... It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or... Do you know what I mean? No, oh, because, what do you wish you no, could do that's no, impossible because, is the question. No, because, or, uh, uh, out of, what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility. <laughs> is what with I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it, w well, would you like spidey senses? Is that what you're saying? Uh, come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes, because they can, they can, I know, but it they always, can freeze they, things. They're never they... happy, are they? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Spider-Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had, he could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. <laughs> Superman never told Lewis and that. It's Lewis. It's Lewis. It's Lewis. It's Lewis. Yeah. Oh. It's just a pen pal of Superman. <laughs> Lewis. His little secret yeah, job. Yeah. yeah. All right, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> It's true, he's got a theme. He has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpower do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Just, let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of... Wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant and, and, why, it's, put, and it's put to such it's brilliant really, use. <laughs> it's really well done! And why why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh what would you gain from that? Dunno, you could sort of <laughs> go in go in shops when they're shut. So you don't have to go. How would you get in? Just get in just before they lock up. Oh, yeah. And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. <laughs> so, hang on. So, that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak well, into... Don't. Never mind. No, hang on. Let's just... You want to sneak into HMV, right? Wait for 12 hours <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> ah, I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't, I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this! It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. <sighs> Not happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Just going through a few more of these uh, emails. This one's from uh, Kent from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl... Um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he um, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? <laughs> what was his job? Benjamin Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from the 1800s. He was it, a, a sort of thinker, of, a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, he's also on a money. political figure. He features on he's the on a dollar bill or the ten dollar bill or something. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers. Right. And he came up with the mantra, waste not, want not. You must know waste not, want not. I mean, that's just... Do you I'll, understand I'll, the I'll, phrase waste not, want not? Uh, no, not really, no. What, what does it mean? I've never used it. It's yeah. like... Uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So he was a bit of a well, hoarder. if you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> you will... a bit of a hoarder! <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profane things. So why things. is that one He remembered? did experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more. Invent electricity than someone. He didn't just... invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying. Well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I'd just say, whoa, whoa, don't, don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. Carl Pilkington. Whereas some would argue five. that waste not want not is, is perhaps a little bit more pithy, a little bit we more. We should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, sa and say, if Carl, he could, well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Right, we'll What's make another one do that next week? time. All right, uh, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill. Um, never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you, do you know what that means? I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who, who gave a lot for a few or whatever. Right. No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e., it means the, these these few good men, their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person but, in the world, and they brilliant. they were few yeah. brave men. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who who gave up his life, right? I'd want a name check. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives. Well done on that. See you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> yeah, bungled in, yeah. You made up a word! You don't want to be bungled in. You made up a word. See, that's it, you see. We've been looking for it. That's original. That's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. Right, do you know how we've, we've chatted about uh, charities before, haven't we? Sure, yeah. Done a lot of stuff on that, right? It's coming back from Manchester, right? Got off the train, Houston. Yeah. Right? The train walking through the, the, the busy bit and stuff. So this fella stood there, right? A charity worker. Yeah. Right? He, he, nice looking fella. He's got his suit on, the tie and everything. Quite respectable and that, right? Look down at his bucket. All the all money's been put in the bucket and that, yeah. right? On the front of the bucket, right? He says collecting for the homeless at Christmas. Now, why can't they do that? <laughs> what, the homeless? The, the homeless people. Why is some fella <laughs> taking his time out, right? His own time where he could be at home. Why, why, <laughs> Some of us have got homes to go to. Yeah. Why, why, do you know what I mean? What, what do you think, just give them the buckets? Well, what are the homeless people doing whilst he's doing that? <laughs> is what I'm saying. What, what have they got on the timetable? Cut out the middleman. <laughs> Cut out the middleman. What would prevent a homeless person, an, an entrepreneurial or homeless person, just getting a bucket and writing yeah. that on their themselves? Could I suggest something? Um, hunger. Uh, some drug addiction, uh, traumas, often mental illness, um, just possibly too, too depressed to get up, put a suit on and go to Houston Station with a nice bucket with some writing on it. And then, right, I was thinking, thinking about that, right, and I was walking down, walking down the street in London with Suzanne, saw a little homeless, well, I didn't see the homeless bloke, right, I saw a leg, right, right sticking out of a doorway, but here we go, right, walk past it. Right, you're not going to believe this. Go on. Homeless. Yeah. Chinese fella. I've never seen one of them. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not having to go. Right. But have you ever seen? Uh, do you know what I mean? That that was a shock. I to really me. don't think I have. I think he's got me there. I I I hate to say it, but I must say I can't remember ever seeing a homeless uh, Chinese person. Weird, what? isn't it? <laughs> well, I was at walk past and I said to Suzanne, did you see that? She went, what? I said, just look back there. She said, what? I said, that homeless fella, look back at him. She said, what? I said, he's Chinese. <laughs> and she said, yeah, good point. <laughs> good point. Of course she did. She, she said that to shut you up. She didn't yeah. want to get into a conversation with you. Um, I got a text from Carl yesterday, Steve. A text from Carl, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just read it to you. Okay. See you to Moz for a face rub at 6.30 then. No bum tubes, though. So I was intrigued, and I called Carl and said, I think you've just sent me a text by mistake. What's the explanation of that? My mate, right, Russell, he just said, he said, you know, you, you, there's things that go on in life that you need to experience. Yeah. He said, just, just pop along. and I, I, I didn't say yes straight away. What's a face rub? You mean a facial, where you lay down... You just clean your face with a flannel yeah. and that, so, but you're going to go lie down with another man and have your face Well, no, with. this is what I was saying to him. There's, there's a couple of questions. I didn't just say yes straight away. I questioned it. I said, well, I'm not that happy with this. So I said, look, there's nothing weird going on here, is there? I said, it's not a house, is it? It's a proper <laughs> clinic and that. He said, yeah, it's proper. You wear a, a dressing gown and that. I said, well, I'm not that So happy he's already got you in the dressing gown? Yeah, well, I haven't agreed to that. Today I've worn a little round polar neck sort of jumper so I don't have to take it off. It's not going to get in the way of my face. I made sure I didn't wear a shirt with a collar. I'm not taking this off. They can put the dressing gown on top of this. Right. Okay. I don't know if it's a woman who rubs me head 
I don't know if it's a bloke or, or whatever. Well, the thing is, you get extra, don't you, for your face rub? Because your face goes all the way back over the oh. top of your head down to the back of your but, neck. But all I was so you've got a big face, haven't all, you? All I was saying to him is, I'll have the face rub, but I don't know if, if once you're in there, right. they try and sell you the old, uh, the old, the, the, the bum tube thing. I, what, what's what, a bum tube? The, is that a euphemism? What are you talking about? The thing where they pop a tube in and put coffee in your belly and it cleans you out and that. An like enema? That. Well, why would you have that? I don't, I'm not, I don't want it. I don't, I don't think why you not? need to. Just because I think I've said to you before about, you know, you, you don't need to be that clean inside. You know what I mean? I don't mind washing my face. <laughs> but at, what occasion do you need where you're that cleaned out? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it, it, it's always a clear tube and that, and you see all the stuff whizzing past. I don't understand why it's clear. I don't know why you've got to see what's coming out of you. Like it's, you know, like the generation game, making notes of what's whizzing past. Forget it. <laughs> I was watching uh, some different TV, saw an amazing documentary, it was called Tribes. This guy, and he goes and lives with different tribes around the world, these small little indigenous people. Mm. And uh, there was one, he went, to, he went to Papua New Guinea in Indonesia, right Carl? He lived with the Kombai tribe, mm. alright? Now, this Papua New Guinea is an extraordinary place because it is one of the only places left on earth that hasn't been fully explored. There are parts of it that it's just blank on the map because they, they've never explored there. They don't know what's there, they don't know what's going on. So, firstly, that must already freak you out. Imagine that. 21st century, they have no idea what's going on down there. But do they, do they need to know if there's nothing going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they don't know what's going on. There could be stuff going on. No, but there's, there's no chance that they'll go, we haven't been over there and someone goes and there's like an Arndale centre. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to be there, is it? So there's no... Well, no I'll point. tell you what is there, okay? There's these various small tribes. Some of these tribes are still cannibals, eating people from other tribes. Do they know they could move on? Have they got a telly? Or have they, have they seen a telly and gone, I'm not up for that? Or are they just, are they saying... It's not the Amish. They haven't chosen But what this. is the difference between the Amish and these people? Well, the Amish are a, a group of people that choose to live in that way. These people are just essentially untouched by civilization. I mean, they do have interaction with civilization, and people do come there, but they, they still live in this very, very almost prehistoric way. They did buy a telly, but there was nothing on, because there isn't any uh, broadcasters. They can plug it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah. an absolute nightmare. Yeah. But there was one guy, okay, now he uh, said that his brother was dying, this was a couple of years ago, right? His brother was dying. He said to his dying brother, what happened? Why are you dying? This guy said, it was a bloke in another village. Okay, he goes over to the other village, he kills this other bloke, right? He eats him, or eats bits of him. Uh, the other village gets a bit annoyed, they go, what's going on? Why did you kill this bloke? They went, he went, sorry about that, right? They said, well, you need to make it up to us. He gave him a pig. They said, a pig's not enough. They gave him five pigs, so five pigs apparently made up for the fact that they'd killed one of them. They said, well, hang on, what are you going to do with but this bloke's wife? Why, why were they bartering? Why didn't they just get the police in and say, what's, what's going on? But, what yeah, what, police? Yeah, yeah, what, why didn't they call in Kojak? Because he'd have sorted it out, wouldn't he? What I mean is, right, they're miles away from anything, but he doesn't sound like the great place to live, right? Could they not move? Could one of them go, <laughs> do you know what, I'm sick of this. I, I'm, I'm moving or whatever and go to a proper city. How far away is this, um, these Papa people, um, <laughs> to, to, Papa people. To, to the next, to the next... They're like, like the Smurfs, they're very like the Smurfs. But how, how many miles away from a, like, a place with a normal life going on? But, but think about this, Carl. Firstly, don't... they don't speak the language, so they don't have any practical skills, they've got no experience of civilization. So even if they chose to go and live in one of these cities, what can they do? How can they function? I think there's some bacteria that has better lives than that. That's got to be offensive. Why? <laughs> okay, how about this is the one of the weirdest things. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> An entire people. An yeah. entire race. Just dismiss. No, no, just no, no. dismiss. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not having a go, but I'm just saying I, I wouldn't fancy it, is what I mean. But they don't know of nice. another world. How can they imagine that they could Oh, I'll tell you what, this is boring. I'm tired of, of hunting for food and, and eating fish from the river. I'll tell you what, I'd like a world where there's iPods and room service. I'm gonna go and move to New York. They're not thinking like that, are they, Carl? Because they don't know about <laughs> people go to these places on holiday now, they like a little bit of danger. They like to see how the others live. Mm. So all I'm saying is, we know they exist. Yeah. The Papa people, maybe people aren't going there. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like the best place. You know, I can't imagine it having a, a tourist board or anything, right? But would they accept me if I popped over there and, you know, with Suzanne in Papa? Well, 
Okay, this is this is one of the things that they they do. Okay, which is a tradition you may have to do. These uh, combi, right? They invert their penises, so they push their penises back up inside their bodies like a sock. What for? Well, keep it out of the way. Of what? Well, if you're running through the undergrowth chasing a, a, a hog, you don't want it clapping away, you know. But, but it's also become a kind of ceremonial thing, so if you were over there, you may well have to try it yourself. You, you would have to try it yourself. If you went there, you'd have to try it Definitely. yourself. But even caveman had little pants on. Why, why haven't they... Whoa! Whoa. Uh, slow down. Rewind. <laughs> what do you Again, mean? you've been watching the Flintstones. No, 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 it's just, you know... Is it a leopard skin pair of pants that's actually quite right. a... Go on. But, but it's a well-known fact that they wore, like... Bear pants or whatever. Bear pants? <laughs> no, what just, do you mean, just, bear just, pants? Just, no, 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 listen, this, you, are, you are a qualified uh, anthropologist, so uh, what, um... I mean, I mean that, you know, you, when, whenever you see them on footage or in a museum... Footage? Or, yeah. <laughs> whenever or you or see that... Well, it's shaking, it, yeah, it's black and white as well, isn't it? Caveman footage. I, I, you always see them wearing a little bit of fur, fur little pants and that. So, what I'm saying is, even <laughs> though, what, what year is it to these um, people in the woods? What, I mean, what? I don't know what this conversation don't is know. anymore. I, he, he's just clutching at straws. His mind is... Uh, it, it, it's like um, a fly, his mind, isn't it? It's just buzzing round. It's trying to find a window. It, it, it is just it's like... hitting against pieces of information, but then yeah, just bouncing yeah. off. Yeah. Days to perplex. Yeah, forget it then. <laughs> I was uh, shopping with Carl before Christmas, and we went round sort of Piccadilly and St James's and those really beautiful shops around there. And I went in one shop. You had to um, ring a bell to enter. Yeah. They came down, and it's like a, a iconoclastic sort of shop, and they they found things from churches and uh, r uh, nearly all Russian, 16th century pieces onwards. This beautiful. Uh, uh, carvings and, and paintings and statues, and I went, oh, it's beautiful. And as I was looking round, I heard Carl sidle up to the bloke and go. What's the newest thing you've got here? <laughs> yeah. Sure, that's his first thought. I mean, that is the wrong question to ask of a man who's clearly in antiques. Yes. Um, proud of the fact he's got 16th century, uh, kind of classic Russian stuff, to ask, what's the newest thing you've got here? It's the, I mean, what sort of question is that? Oh, I don't know, probably the doorbell. I don't know, what, what does he want to say, oh, my shirt? What, what, <gasps> what were, were you thinking? hoping for? And I think it's an alright question, because he, he was saying there's loads of old stuff in there, and he kept going, oh, about the old stuff. So what to say? Well, what, what's, what's the newest thing you've got? <laughs> and what was? Do you know the what he thing? said? To it, the other question he asked him, he said, "How often do you get new stuff in?" And I said to him, "Why did you ask that?" He said, "Well, I was thinking, if you got antiques and you sell it all, what's left?" Like someone's going to sell all the antiques in the world because they're not making. He said, "Because they're not making any new stuff." What does that mean? They're not making any new stuff. But I know for a fact, no one's ever going to go in there and buy the lot anyway. I mean, <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I'm not at any point in my life, and I don't think it'll ever happen, will I go, I need some old Russian wood. Cause that's, it was that's, brilliant. No, it was, I, Steve, it, no. it was beautiful. It's amazing stuff. There's stuff, there, it's, there's, mm. um, um, uh, these things, uh, from the 16th century of sort yeah. of like saints and monks and they're carved God, and there's they're... loads of it. It's just all piled up. No one's interested. Oh. If I was him, I'd go, do you know what? I'm into this, but no one else is. Close shot. <laughs> because seriously, it's just piled up, up piles up on piles of like old, Bits of wood with pictures on it and that. But there think of a fella. man. Just think of a man four hundred years ago that carved this. That carved this. Uh, you know. No, but nobody wants it, do they? I've never heard anyone say, you know, oh look, it's my birthday coming up. I'll tell you what, I'd love what a bit of old Russian wood. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't happen. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying they like. I've never overheard someone saying you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh, them old drawings on, like... It was like a panel from a church that someone had d d okay, painted. Right, yeah. And I think it was, like, you know, from sort of, like, 1590 or something. Yeah. And it was this, uh, a, a picture of this, uh, this mm. saint, wasn't it? So, 1590. It could be from any time, really. So, there's this one there, right, leaning up against the wall. And, uh, <laughs> most of them in there was that Stalin bloke, right? Mm. But there was this little... Right, can I just stop with there? Lenin. Right, okay. all right then. Yeah. yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff, but I saw this other little face, right? Little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so, uh, I said, who's this bloke here? He said, oh, uh, the story there, right? He said, uh, it's this little fella, and he got mugged back in Russia. <laughs> This is right, isn't it? This is what he was yeah. saying. He said he got more. This is that, that term. That, I love that, that term in, the, in a 16th century Russian wood. Oh, no, I'm being mugged. So, so he, he got mugged. He got happy slapped. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he said, I've had enough of this. Right? Yeah. And he went to live in the woods. 
right? Made like a little shed, stayed there, people went to visit him, and, and like, if you've got a problem, you knock on his door and you go, oh, I'm sick of it. And he'll sort of say, yeah, I know what you mean, I've, I've moved out of the city and what have you. And he'd make them feel better, and then they go again. Now, why has that man <laughs> got a plaque? <laughs> if he was around now, there's no way he'd have a bit of wood with his face on it, is what I'm saying. If someone had <laughs> got fed up with living in London or New York or whatever, and they go, I'm gonna go and live in the woods, people wouldn't visit him, and he wouldn't get a piece of wood with his face on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> But well, this man is selling it for about, I think it was about 750 quid for, for this bloke's head. But the chances are that this is either a well-known Russian folktale, or it may even be a piece of classic Russian He's literature. a saint. He was a saint. Or, oh, okay. He was well, canonised. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everybody, everybody was a saint years ago. That seems to be, like, thrown about, doesn't it? He was a saint now. Name him one now. Yet this fella lived in a woods in a hut. Oh yeah, that's Saint John or whatever. <sighs> he's not a saint, he's done nothing. If anything, he's sort of said, I can't be bothered with living in a city with everyone else. Everyone else has got to put up with it, but I can't put up with it. I'm going to live in the woods. Well, if you can't put up with it, you're not good enough, are you? You've got no stamina. <laughs> and yet he gets a plaque, is what I'm saying. It's annoying. Who would, you like, to see, who would you like to see get a plaque in the modern world? Who deserves a plaque, in your opinion? Probably, like, nurses and that, who, who do a lot of bad things that I think I couldn't do that. Carrying lungs about and all that. <laughs> No, but I, I couldn't do, do you know what I mean? That's that's one job that oh. I, my mum wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, <laughs> wow! What was she Whoa. thinking? Oh, what's oh, her expectations this like apple now? This didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, when did she start giving up that dream? At what age did she start going, Carl, you don't need to study your books anymore. Go, go and play with the worms in the garden. When did she sort of, like, let you off that dream? Is it the day that she caught you with a spoon up your nose? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, talking of emails and that, right, uh, Nick, who's emailed from Australia, right, Melbourne, he's, uh, he's, he's been going on about dolphins and that, problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when, when that, that wind happened, <laughs> um, there was like a bad wind thing going on. Hold on, wait a minute, what, what bad wind? Um, in, in America, they had that- Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Right. And there was like a little bay with dolphins in it and right. like with all guns on them and stuff. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Because they use dolphins, don't they? They say they're intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all like, you know, they've all had the training, they're all like ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. Got like rifles on them. <laughs> what do you mean rifles? They've got, How can they've they got hold weapons. the rifle? Got, How can they got, hold a rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you mean it's on what, a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. Whenever <laughs> what it are you off. talking about? Listen, though, that isn't the point. Don't worry about it. Oh, we leave but that one, do we? Is, That's not the point, so let's leave it. So they're swimming about. Right, yeah, with, with rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah. Like, ready for, for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle, yeah. The wind comes in. The wind comes in. Makes Makes a wave and that. They get out of the little bay. Yeah. Still all kitted out. With all the, you know, weapons. You're talking that. bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the. Well, there, there's right? no way. There's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted that out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a. Whoa, again, Nothing. you've been watching Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punks, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly. Because there's some with weapons now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just reading it out on email, that's, that, that'll cover it and that, so. Bollocks. 